I'm at the yurt today and I wanted to talk to everybody about tools in the winter time. And when I say that, I'm really talking about temperatures 10 degrees and colder because I've been experiencing this for the last two weeks pretty consistently. So it made me, I don't want to say change my mindset around tools, it just enlightened me a little bit more about some of the things I've already known and some of the things that I read about, but we don't get this cold of a temperature always here in Pennsylvania. So now it's time I was out like I am almost every day and I'm learning more and more. So I want to share it with you guys. In the wintertime, it's no surprise that we know things are frozen. So the wood that we're dealing with is going to be frozen. So if we're working with projects that we need our famous Y branches or we're splitting firewood, everything is going to be frozen. So that brings me to my first point of knives. Um, knives are just not going to perform the way they do in warm weather because we're dealing with frozen wood. Okay, and any of that moisture inside is frozen. So what I've done is I normally have my normal cold cracker knife that I carry all the time with me, but what I realized was I was doing way less processing of anything with that knife and I moved over to an ax because it's just a bigger, more robust tool. And when I needed to do very fine carving, it worked, but I thought, I'm really not using a knife for anything else, so can I get something that's better? So what I upgraded to, or you can say downgraded to, no matter if you're a knife junkie or not, is just a Sloyd style knife. I put that handle on and um, this knife is of course not as robust as my larger bushcraft knife but it's extremely sharp and it's a carving knife. So what I found is when I'm out in this super cold weather and I need to carve something this has been working a little bit better. So this is what I'm going to carry for right now and I'm always going to have my axe with me. So it's not a situation of oh what if you only have one tool? We're not talking about that. We're talking about we have our tools what are the best tools for this weather a very good sharp carving knife has proven much better to me than any other knife out here so that's what i'm working with right now next is cutting any type of tree so of course firewood is a different story but if we're looking at processing all of them small branches like we do for all them specialized bushcraft projects saws we can look at saws so what i realized was if you have a saw, yes, it'll work fine in the winter. A saw is really good to have in the winter, but blade choice is going to make or break you. So if you can see what that blade looks like, let me flip this one around, to this blade, two different blades. This blade that I'm moving is a green wood blade, and this is a dry wood blade. These weird shaped teeth in here, right here, 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 okay, are rakers. And what they do is they remove material. So for green wood, we want to use the green wood blade of course, but this is how I want you to think of it. When you cut green wood, think of sawdust, dry, nice dry sawdust, and you pour water on it. What does it do? It gets mushy. So those rakers, when we're sawing that wood and it's creating mushy sawdust, wet wood, green wood, it's raking them out and keeping that kerf, the cut, nice and clean and allowing us to cut. Whereas a dry wood blade doesn't have anything like that because what we saw, we're getting just dry sawdust coming out. So there's nothing clumping up inside. And that's probably the easiest way to explain it. So now think about the winter time. Everything is frozen. So if, if the wood is green and we're cutting into it, that it's ice. We're cutting through ice. I found that a dry wood blade is far superior in the winter time than that green wood blade would ever be. So upgrading your saw to a dry wood blade is going to be tremendous. Lastly, of course, is going to be your tool of choice in a winter time environment. And you really should be proficient enough with this to make it work to do any task you would need, and that is your ax. Okay, um, depending on what you're processing is gonna depend on your ax, and we all know that if we're only cutting real little stuff, we usually take more of a hatchet compared to felling trees, a felling ax, but with frozen wood in the winter, small hatchets, even a small forest ax from Grants for Brooks might not be enough to split some of that larger wood out just because of the fact it's frozen solid. Now, I'm lucky enough with this trapper's hatchet that this has a little bit heavier of a head and the design of it, um, the bevel on it, it works really, really good in cold environments, but I would say this is somewhat of an exception to the rule. So my suggestion is to get one of two things, either a felling axe head and put a short handle on it, or 
get a felling axe at a yard sale or a flea market. You could find them all over the place, three pound head, and cut the handle short. Okay, they call this a miner's axe because it's a little bit shorter. Yeah, you're carrying a little bit more weight, but this is gonna split through that heavy material that's frozen a lot easier than a hatchet, and you still have the length of a hatchet. So it works really, really well. I've been using this for over a year now, and I love this axe, and I literally bought this head super cheap. It was a mess. I ran a grinder on it, um, cleaned it up, put a new edge on it, and I'm good to go. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. You don't have to cut your Gransford Brooks handle off. Just get yourself an axe, and it will work. Okay, we get too hung up, and I'm going to do a video on this in the future, on um, tools. They're not, um, pr they shouldn't be prized possessions. They should be the workhorses of your camp. Not that we shouldn't take care of them, but I don't want to go on a rant and rabbit hole with that. So, um, just keep this stuff in mind. This my experience out here. Those tools have been really performing well for me. I wanted to share it with you because if you're going to be outside traveling, it might be Time to upgrade your gear because of the cold weather. This was Dan Walk of Coldcracker Bushcraft. Head over to coldcrackerbushcraft.com and check everything out from our store to our classes to our blog. And as always, stay in the woods, guys.